In this video, I want to take you along and show you my business. Last year, we made $1.4 million and we followed a very specific plan. And I wanna break down that plan right here. Every great real estate plan boils down to two parts, having conversations and making offers. The more quality conversations you can have with property owners, the more opportunities that you're gonna find. The more opportunities you find, the more offers that you can make, and the more offers you make, the more deals that you're going to do. So let's break down conversations for a second, because there's really two ways to have conversations with property owners. One is they call you, right? This is what happens with marketing. We put out into the world, hey, we buy houses. The people that wanna sell their properties, they reach out to us. And if their price lines up with our price and their terms line up with our terms, we put that together. It's absolutely incredible, but you have to be careful because this is what absolutely torpedoed my business in 2008 because I was spending a lot of money having people call me and the inventory was really low. So I was real aggressive with my marketing. There was only 6,000 properties on the market here in Phoenix, but over six month time period, each month it started swelling up. All of a sudden in six months, we had 60,000 homes on the market and the properties that i was negotiating or the properties that i had bought all of a sudden weren't worth what i thought they would be worth once we fixed them up and not only that but i was buying rental properties i bought them with adjustable rate mortgages which was a huge mistake i bought a big house million dollar house in north scottsdale that was four thousand square feet and i had the mercedes i had the range rover life was great but the market adjusted and I, did, I wasn't up to date. I didn't understand what was going on and I was still spending the money. All of the savings that I had got totally liquidated. I mean, it just evaporated in front of me. All of a sudden I didn't have savings anymore. And then the adjustable rates adjusted up. All of a sudden all the cash flow I had in the rentals went, was gone. I couldn't afford my house anymore. I couldn't afford the cars anymore. I had to give up the cars. I foreclosed on every single, my, my, my personal home and all the rental properties that I had. And because I didn't understand that I needed to be more proactive in my business, I had to go out there and earn more of these opportunities as opposed, as opposed to just throwing money at it. Everything was destroyed and I had to move into this one bedroom apartment. The interesting thing about hitting rock bottom financially and emotionally is it's actually a really good foundation for building yourself back up. I didn't have a budget to have people call me and have those conversations. So I had to get creative and I had to get proactive. And that's when I decided, you know what? I am just going to drive into neighborhoods where I know investors want to do projects and I'm gonna just go and knock on all the doors of every single property and see if anybody wants to sell their house. And by the way, this was not a great idea. You should be very specific with the people that you go and initiate these conversations with because most people that own really nice houses don't wanna sell their property at a discount. I wanted to go out and find really great deals for my investors and they needed them at a discounted price for it to make sense. So I started targeting the properties that needed a lot of renovation and boom, that's when it happened. I knocked on a door of a property at the end of a street and Susan answered the door, said she didn't wanna sell her property, but she was a caretaker for a vacant house down the street. And I could see the house, it was kind of overgrown, it looked dated, it looked old. And she went inside and she, she grabbed the name and phone number for the property owner. And she verified with the property owner first that, that she was comfortable with me giving her a call. And I called the property owner, she lived in New York. She had said that she wanted to sell the property, but she, you know, she didn't want to sell until she can uh, sell all of her stuff or move all of her stuff and pack it up. I was like, okay, well, if I can help you do that, are you ready to, you know, sign an agreement? And she said, yeah. And I was like, okay. And I took it to my investor and I said, Hey, what would you pay for this? He said, I'd pay 150,000 for it. And I was like, okay. And I made that deal happen. And just like that, out of thin air, out of just walking around sweating in Phoenix, I was able to do a deal and I was able to make a few thousand dollars. And I was like, okay, my head's getting a little bit 
above water. I can pay some bills and, and it feels good to have a little bit of money in the bank account. And by the way, I had a 430 credit score. I couldn't even put it in a regular checking account. I had to get this weird online checking account that you had to put in like $500 guarantee that you wouldn't overdraft it because my credit was so bad and none of the regular banks would let me have a checking account. This was the start. This was it. I was like, oh my gosh, okay. If I could just go out there and if I could just talk to enough people and see if they want to sell their property and match them up with investors, I will win. Stay to the end of this video because I'm going to break down every single deal that we did this year, exactly how we found it, what was the exit strategy, what we made on them, all those things, because I want this to be approachable. I want you to understand that absolutely anybody can do this business. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of how we found our deals and how much we made from every single marketing channel. At the top of the list, is us being wildly proactive, all right? We call it TTP. Basically, it is cold calling, it is phone prospecting. We are reaching out to the property owners. This is the core of our business because I don't want a repeat of 2008. I wanna be in the driver's seat of making sure that my costs are really low and we're going out there and earning these opportunities. And then we call it TTP because that's talk to people. That is the essence of our business. It's our motto is talking to people. We know that the more people we talk to, the more that we can control our environment. We can control our destiny when it comes to our business and hitting the goals that we want to achieve. $456,000 from joint ventures. Once you are building momentum in your business, people are going to refer you business or they're going to want to work with you. $300,000 of this is me being the money person in some deals that some incredible flippers in the marketplace wanted to partner with me so that I would provide them the financing and we would split the deal, right? It's absolutely incredible what happens when you build a solid reputation. And that really comes along with giving to your community, going out there and really providing value to the people that are coming up in this business, all right? Next is $146,000 from text message marketing, all right? We don't call it text blasting. We call it text message marketing. It was down, I'll be honest. Um, the year before it went bananas, it was over 400,000, but this year um, in uh, 2022 was 146,000. Still profitable, still good, but not nearly as effective as it used to be. Next is $115,000 from web. This is pay-per-click. People coming to our website and filling out a form saying they wanna sell the property. We didn't put a tremendous amount of our budget towards web just because it's really expensive in major markets and I want to stay really profitable. So, but we were able to do that and then 55,000 from Facebook ads. You can steal this plan. The best way to steal this plan is really to understand the people behind the plan because this is the marketing channel, but I would have to be taking all of these calls I would have to be doing all of the lead follow-up. I would have to be pre-qualifying all the property owners. I would have to be going on the appointments and selling the deals and or managing the contractors for flipping these properties. But I don't do any of that because I have four people. I have four incredible people in my company that control all of it. So let's break that down. First is my lead manager, Jackie. She's absolutely phenomenal. She's the person that keeps us all organized. She takes everything off of my plate when it comes to lead generation. She's pulling all of the distressed property lists, the foreclosures, the tired landlords, the tired multifamily property owners, the vacant properties, the probates, all of these lists, she's pulling in, organizing it, and putting it in a system so that our phone prospectors and our texters can go and reach out to these property owners and start bringing those leads in. Not only that, but she's organizing all of the accounts when it comes to our pay-per-click and our Facebook accounts and our referral network. So she's organizing everything. Basically, she lives in our CRM. She's in there making sure that everybody is organized and everybody is accountable. And that leads me to my junior acquisition manager, Chad. He is on the phone all day. Now listen here, I really truly believe this. There should be somebody that's out in the field all the time, out in the streets, going on the appointments, and there should be somebody that's in the office making calls, following up with leads all the time. If you make it the same person, it gets really chaotic because it starts really slowing down the momentum 
of their day if they have to leave and run around on appointments. If you have a junior acquisition manager, all he does all day is he makes between 50 and 60 calls to our leads. And he's just warming up. He's shortening the timeline for them to make a decision. And as soon as they're close, as soon as they're ready to make the decision that they are going to sign a purchase agreement with a buyer, it goes to Ryan, my closer, my acquisition manager. Ryan is then building that relationship, getting in front of, of all of these property owners, going on the appointment, he's taking pictures, he's taking videos, he's getting it down to the final price in terms. And he's absolutely incredible at it. And it's a powerful, powerful position because if you don't have somebody that can go out there and is very versatile and has a really kind, empath empathetic heart, it's gonna be really difficult for you to really get the most out of every single one of your leads. And the last person is Jeremy, my disposition manager. He is the one that determines, are we flipping this property? Are we holding this property? Are we wholesaling this property? Most of the time we're wholesaling the property. He goes out and he reaches out to our over 5,000 cash buyers and puts these properties in front of the buyers and, sit and sees if they want to buy this deal. I think that the capacity is $2 million a year. We haven't gotten there yet. The highest we've gotten is a little bit over 1.7 in a year, but I think that we can push to $2 million a year with just these four people, which means that you can pay them really well. There's not gonna be a tremendous amount of turnover and you can build a really solid business. This may feel overwhelming if you're just getting started, but I don't want it to be, okay? Don't compare my chapter 50 to your chapter one if you're just getting started. This is an exciting time for you. What I want you to do is this, it's very simple. Go out and find 200 of the roughest looking, the properties that need the most renovation in your neighborhoods, in your city, in your area, in your town. Find 200 properties. You can go to public records and find the owners of that property. You can go to True People Search and find the phone numbers for those people and just call them up and ask them, when do you plan on selling this property? If you wanna learn more about like how to have those conversations, put some comments down below. I promise that I will respond to every comment that you have down below. And I really wanna know what you need some help with because I'd love to make some more videos so that you can get the instruction that you need to implement into your business. But that's it, find those 200 properties and just call them up. That's how we start building up our confidence. That's how we start building up our pipeline of leads. And then once you get to that point where you've replaced your income and you can go full time in this business, this is the schedule that I want until you can start hiring people from nine to noon, I want you talking to people. I want you reaching out to property owners. I want that to be your time to really hunt, hunt for those incredible, incredible deals. Then I want a quick lunch, 12 to 12.15, quick lunch. We don't need an hour. We don't need two hours for lunch. Let's eat a quick entrepreneur's lunch. And then we're on to lead follow-up. You do lead follow-up for about an hour. And that's when you're setting up all your appointments and the afternoon you spend on appointments. That's the perfect schedule. That's what I did every single day for four years. I talked to over 45,000 property owners and that's how I built the business. And that's what's so exciting about it is because with just a phone and a computer and a name and an address and a phone number, you can absolutely build an incredible business. I wanna encourage you to go out there and talk to people. I'll see you next time. Love you guys.